Um, stay tuned if you want to learn about our first interactive hair clip meeting to discuss the science of black hair and how we use these to test our products and uh, determine if the pH balance of our products was in the right range for our hair to thrive and be healthy and grow and be protected. Okay, let's get started. It was such a great meeting. I hope you guys had fun reading your first 60 pages. Um, I really want to know, you guys, what you learned from the first 60 pages, too. So after you watch this video, I want to know a couple of questions. One, what was your aha moment in the first 60 pages? Like, what was something that you really learned that you had no idea about concerning your hair that you were like, wow, I just didn't know that? Um, and two, what are the things that you are going to change of anything after reading those first 60 pages about your hair regimen? Um, anything you're going to try differently, you know, just to see if you can get a better result. And number three, um, did you have the opportunity to get the pH strips? You might not have, but have you been able to test your products? Are the products that you're using on your hair within the healthy pH range for your hair to thrive. And if they're not, how are you going to combat that? What is your solution for that? So anywho, let's get started and jump into it. Um, some of my aha moments were the fact of learning that there were three different hair bonds um, that are involved, in three different types of hair bonding with the hair. So let's just discuss them very quickly for um, those of you who are following along, those of you who haven't got the chance to get the book yet, you know, you can watch this and then run out and get the book. Um, so the three different hair bonds, one is disulfide, which can only be broken chemically. So basically when you get a perm, that is the bond that's being broken in your hair. So that's the bond that allows your hair to stay permanently straight because that bond is broken. Once it's broken, it can't be undone or repaired. It's, it's just permanently broken. Okay, so that's one hair bond, one type of hair bond. Then there's salt bonds, and this is the thing that was kind of like, oh, I didn't know this. Salt bonds are broken by the pH changes in the hair. That's why you guys are seeing all these people on YouTube after having read her book, people are understanding how important the pH is to their hair. And that if you don't test your products and you don't know the pH, if it's too high or it's too low, you're going to be breaking those salt bonds. You're going to be causing damage to your hair. So that's why it's important. You know, these things are only like, I think, $10, $11. You can order them online, like get them. And at least you know what you're putting on your hair is actually helping your hair and not harming your hair. Because who wants to pay money to harm their hair? You don't want to spend money and get a product and have it like jacking your hair up, right? So you may as well just spend the 11 bucks in that. Um, and then number three were the hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds, interestingly enough, this is what I did now, hydrogen bonds are the most flexible bonds. They are easily broken in the presence of water and heat. They're primarily responsible for the changing the shape of our hair. So that was kind of interesting to me. I, I would assume, based off of that statement that she made, that that would mean that hydrogen bonds is where heat damage can occur. Because apparently, it's, a, it's, it's, it's easily broken in the presence of heat, and it's easily broken in the presence of water. The other thing that I liked, which we talked about, was the hair growth cycles, you guys. Which, for newbies, in case you don't know, I'm going to briefly go over this. But most of us veterans kind of know the hair, everybody's hair in general. It doesn't matter the nationality. Nobody's extra special. You know, hair grows a quarter of an inch to a half an inch each month. Each month. There might be some people that are a little bit outside of that, get a little bit faster growth or a little bit slower. But on average, like, probably 80% of us or 90% of us, you're going to get a quarter of an inch to a half an inch a month. So that was like, you know, I knew that, but it was just nice to see it. And then she went over the phases, which I'd heard about hair phase or growth phases, but there was a phase I didn't know about. So that was kind of interesting. So there's four different stages of hair growth for a hair in the lifetime of, its, of a hair. Um, phase one is the antigen phase, which is when your hair is growing. Phase two is the catagen phase, which is a resting phase. And then there's phase three, which is the telogen phase, which is the shedding phase. So your hair begins to shed. And then stage four is the exogen or the dormant phase. And that's when it's dormant and it's kind of preparing itself to go back into the cycle of growing percent. And she said only 80% of hair ever enters into this phase. So that was kind of interesting um, to know. Your hair, you guys, is not in the same phase all at the same time. Because if it were, every seven years she said we go bald, which I thought was hilarious. So the hair is in different phases all the time. Now, hallelujah, 
for the section I really liked, which was the pH balance. Hair has a certain pH when it's at its healthy range, basically, which she said is between 4 and 5.5. If you're putting things in your hair that are causing you to lower your pH, that's going to constrict the cuticle layers, which is going to cause them to lie flat tightly against each other and in that state the hair is um, thoroughly protected so basically it's going to make all the cuticles and everything kind of close up and be nice and tight so if you use lower ph balance stuff you can use that to basically make your cuticles lie flat they'll be nice and smooth you won't have all this harsh rigid frizzy you know tangling hair now here's what happens if you use products that the ph is too high it's going to cause the hair cuticle scales to lift and the hair will start to swell open. Lifted cuticles are why hair is tangly, dry looking, doesn't hold moisture, and hair is weak and vulnerable in that state. So, you know, knowing that, you have to be disciplined to know what you're putting on your hair. So we spent the whole afternoon, just uh, all of us, we had like buckets and vats of product. I told everybody to bring every product that they use on their hair. And all we did, you guys, was dip the stick in and test products and get the results. And then we would write the product and we would write the results. So like, um, suave conditioner, 6.5. Um, let's see, we had Shea Moisture was a 6. Um, Dr. Bronner's soap. Oh my God. Oh my God. Diluted. Diluted it with a nine. It wasn't, it didn't start off a nine. It was like in a 10 or something. So, you know, we were like, whoa, don't use that on the hair. Um, I think we said niacin shampoo was a 5.5. We did the Shea Leave It. There were so many of you guys. I won't, I won't bore you with, with leaving all, with reading all of them. But the point is, is that once we knew if our products were in the healthy range of what was in the book, then it was like, well, how can we either bring them down or, or, uh, manipulate them so that they're they're falling within the range. I'm going to do a pH balance test for you guys and also tell you what next week's assignment is. So next week's assignment is from page 59 or 60 and this is going to be the juicy part you guys because it is all about hair regimen and she's going to be breaking down products and the hair and you know building your hair regimen and all kind of stuff. I'm really excited about that. So we're going to go from page 60 to the end of that chapter, which is going to be page 125, okay? Anyway, let's get to the pH test strip. Remember to answer the questions, you guys, okay? What was your aha moment? Are you going to change anything in your hair regimen? What did you learn? What were your questions? How do you feel about the book? Just comment on the book. Okay, you guys, it's very important that you test the water at your home to confirm that it has a neutral pH of 7. If it's higher, you may have hard water. Hard water can lead to breakage because the minerals will have a drying effect and coat the hair and prevent moisture from entering to the shaft. The results will be dry, tangly, puffy hair that's dull or has a strange color, and the deposits can build up on the scalp and cause a dandruff condition. As you can see, my water is not at 7. It's somewhere between 7 and 8. So I will do an apple cider vinegar rinse after I co-wash or add a little bit of aloe vera juice to my spray bottle when I'm spraying my hair and wetting it before I apply my conditioner. This will help to bring the water down to a neutral balance of seven.